Today, libraries and archives are the repository of a vast multitude of objects in their collections, yet they are still the main holders of books and manuscripts on paper than any other type of institution. Preserving and stabilizing materials is part of the everyday maintenance of collection in libraries or archives. Any attempt to apply conservation techniques involves evaluation of the collection in an array of different levels. If your institution has a preservation policy, you will benefit when planning and assessing the current practices, determining the adequate treatments and procedures for the holdings. If you don't have a preservation policy, consider forming a committee. A committee can help on identifying items that are part of the permanent collection from those of the non-permanent collection. Define what is valuable in your collection and what valuable means for your institution. With this basic information, you will be able to prioritize items in need of treatment according to staff number and expertise complexity of conservation treatment, laboratory equipment, and available archival materials. Why old books still have good paper, even those that are 500 years old? And why some books become so brittle even to the touch through time? With the invention of the paper making machine 200 years ago, paper components also changed, which led to a more commercial product and consequently less quality and durability. Books, manuscripts, and documents are in constant contact by the public, researchers, and staff. And no matter how careful one can be, damage can occur just by handling an item. Tears are common to happen, especially on brittle papers, and mending is a common practice used not only by conservators, but by owners or custodians of a collection. Several are the archival materials and procedures for repairing paper artifacts, all together requiring specific conservation training and a careful evaluation of the damaged item. Japanese papers made from kozu fibers are among the best used in conservation procedures, together with wheat starch paste, rice starch paste, or methyl cellulose. This video will share with you basic method and the practical aspect of repairing brittle paper using Nashen Filmoplast R, also known as heat set tissue. It's important to note that this procedure is recommended for brittle fragile papers and newsprint paper. Do not use Nashen Filmoplast R known as heat set tissue on historic collections and manuscripts. Although heat set tissue is reversible with isopropyl alcohol, these collections are subject to challenging work with complex procedures that only a trained conservator should perform. Last but not the least, any type of commercial tape should be avoided in all historic documents and books. The harm they cause is bigger than the artifact damage itself. Mending with heat set tissue is one of the basic procedures in conservation of archival materials, requiring minimum training of staff or volunteers. In this example, you will see how acidity has affected the paper structure of the entire book, which is fragile, 
breaking very easily to the touch, with losses along the edges and changes in paper coloration. Heat-set tissue is transparent, long-fibered, acid-free, buffered with magnesium carbonate, lignin-free, and has a heat-activate adhesive. Very little training is needed to perform repair in brittle papers with heat-set tissue. Note on this example that a few small pieces of paper are loose broken due to the acidity of the paper. You will need to reattach them before proceeding to work with the larger areas. Cut thin strips of heat set tissue with your fingers. This will provide uneven edges, which is desirable for the mending final appearance. Place the page to be repaired on the top of release paper and blotter. Use a small wave so the paper won't move and place the piece of heat set tissue on the top of the tear. Cover with release paper. And use the small iron to apply heat warm enough to activate the glue. You will need to test your iron to set the temperature to a desirable level and protect any printed part of the paper because the ink may be unstable and will bleed with heat. A low temperature will not activate the glue and the heat set tissue is not going to be transparent as you can see on the photo. The correct temperature is around 110 degrees Celsius or 230 Fahrenheit. After attaching the other small pieces of loose paper, proceed to the larger areas. There are several ways to cut the heat set tissue for the infills. We will show two of them. One way is using a piece of polyester film and a permanent marker to trace the area to be infilled. Place the polyester film on the top of the page and with a thin point of the permanent pen, trace the edges of the missing areas. The pen line will serve as a guide when cutting the heat set tissue to fit the insert size. As you can see on this photo, the guidelines are matching the losses. Remove the brittle page from under the polyester film and place on top of it a larger piece of heat set tissue, bigger than the area you are mending. With the help of an awl, Trace the guidelines of the missing area on the top of the heat set tissue. Cut the heat set tissue with your fingers using the all lines you just traced. Place the page to be mended on the top of release paper and blotter. Use a small paper wave to hold the page in place. Insert the piece of heat set tissue you just cut it and cover with another piece of release paper and apply heat. Proceed to mending on the other side of the page and repeat the same process, applying heat to finalize the mending. Here you can see the infill completed. The other way to trace the infill is using a light pad. The back light will highlight the area to be infilled. Place the page and the release paper on top of light pad and with a pencil trace the area to be infilled. Remove the traced paper from light pad and using an awl trace the contour on a piece of heat set tissue. This will make easier to split the heat set tissue with your fingers and to have an uneven edge. You will also need two pieces of release paper to proceed on this technique. One on the bottom of the paper you will repair and another one on the top. 
This will prevent your material to adhere to the surface when applying heat. Use heat to activate the adhesive and proceed to other side repeating the same steps as above. At the end, use a small scissor to trim the edge. After finishing all the mending, reattach the page and trim the excess of heat set tissue to the size of the book. The final result shows heat set tissue inserts on three edges of the page, at the bottom and on the two lateral sides, giving enough support for the paper to be handled. Some of the techniques here presented were performed by conservators. If you cannot receive training, protect the material with an enclosure. Doing this will always add a new layer of protection to your book or document. The physical integrity of historical books or documents is always a priority. If your institution is not able to offer financial support for training and purchasing the suggested materials, consider involving your local community. Increasing the community awareness of the need for preservation of their local history and heritage is one way to fund a project. Patrons will learn that the books and documents found in their library or archives are part of their heritage and preserving these items will benefit the community for the years to come. Mm -hmm.